We left it off where we created this app shortener, but we didn't do anything in it. Now, when it comes to Django and working with the database, we use apps and more specifically models inside of apps to map to that database. That is, we write some code in this model to make a place to store our data. So we like, like say for instance, our users, right? Like if we jump in back into the admin, let's make sure I'm running the server here and oh, Python manage.py run server. And if we jump back into the admin and take a look, we can see that like if I click on user and click on any specific username, I've got all these fields in here and this stuff's stored in the database. It's stored in the db.sqlite3 in our case because that's what our settings are set up for. But if it was stored in it, or if we had a different database set up, we absolutely can have it stored there. So models actually handles how this stuff works. We can actually write our own fields like how this has a field for username, field for password, first name, and so on. We can write our own fields for models in particular, or uh, that is for our actual app. So what we see in here is something called models already imported. Now models is a built-in Django module that allows us to work with all the things that Django built by default. I'm gonna explain what that is once we build it, but the default things such as model. So if we wanted to create our own model that is very similar to this user model, we could by simply extending the model class. So if I do class and I'll call this URL, or actually I'll call it cur, cur URL, as in the URL that we are creating here. So cur URL, also known as a shortened URL, but I'm calling it cur based off of the name of the project. We do, we can inherit from models.model. And if I just say pass here, so this is the model that it's inheriting from, or that's the class that it's inheriting from. So there's a lot of things that are built into that that you could absolutely look at in the code by searching the same way we did before. You could copy django.db models and say code, and that will show you essentially what this model class code looks like. But we don't need to go into that detail. Instead, what we're gonna do is just create our own field. So what I'm gonna say is I'm gonna call a URL here and I'll do models.char field and I'll say max length equals to 220 and that's all I'm gonna leave it as. And then we're gonna say define an str and it's gonna take in self and we're gonna return the string of self.url. So what's going on here is we created a field and we created a class that inherits from model the reason that this field in the class and all this stuff's gonna work is because of this inheritance. And then we defined an str function. If you're coming from or using Python 2, you're gonna to wanna to define a Unicode function as well. And that will return the same sort of thing. And then we wanna return this string function or the string method. Um, we have, we wanna make sure that we're returning a string as well, which it should with the char field, but we do this to take extra precaution. Okay, so now that we've got this, let's actually add this app into the admin. So we want to look at it in here. So if I go here, I wanna actually be able to see this itself. So if I open up admin.py, I can actually do a relative import. So from .models import, and we call this cur URL. So cur URL, notice that it's all capital and stuff like that. And all we need to do to register it is admin.site.register and cur URL. Cool. So let's make sure that we save it. I constantly am saving. So command S is the shortcut. Control S is the shortcut for Windows. Command S is for Mac. So I'm always saving, constantly saving it. And now what I'm gonna do is jump into my settings and I'm gonna make sure that this app actually is installed because we have these installed apps. These are all Django apps. Now we have our own custom app, so custom app. And we're gonna just come in here and we named the app Shortener. Put a comma after there, because it's in a list, Python list. So we save that. And now we run Python manage.py make migrations. And then Python manage.py migrate. So now it should be in the admin, but let's talk about this for a second. Every time, no matter what, on your apps, 
whether you create an app or you updated something in the app, if it's if you touch models.py and you save it, you wanna run these two commands. This is really important. You're gonna to wanna to remember this. You're gonna to wanna to run python manage.py, make migrations, and python manage.py migrate. The reason for this is to make sure that your models or all of Django basically are in line with your database. If they're not in line with your database, a lot of errors are gonna happen and you're gonna to have to delete a bunch of stuff and then come back. Speaking of deleting stuff, you can delete the folder migrations as well as the db.sqlite. That will start you from scratch and then you would just run this all over again and possibly python manage.py create super user all over again. Yeah, and you can run that at any time too. Okay, so now that we've got that, let's go ahead and run the server here real quick. Python manage.py run server. And let's go into our admin. And what we see here is we have our cur URLs. If I add a cur URL, I have a field here and I could just say HTTP and let's say joincfe.com, for example. I'll hit save and continue. Now my cur URLs are showing up. So you might be wondering, you know, what were these things for? That's just so this on our actual um, list view, this is called a list view. So if I add another URL and let's say um, cfeblog.com or whatever. So these things are now URLs and this is a list view. What's being displayed here comes from these methods right here. So if I just change this to ABC, save that and refresh, it will show ABC. I can also use something called the primary key, which is self.pk or just self.id. And again, I wanna turn this into a string and we refresh in here and it's gonna show that as well. So ID slash PK, those things are auto-generated um, for us, but of course we're gonna be sticking with URLs. And another way to know the primary key or ID, it will be up in the admin URL right there. It's more stuff we'll talk about in a little bit, but now we've got this actual field saved in our database. We wanna actually start doing some stuff with it. That is, we wanna actually shorten that URL or do something along those lines. So if you have any questions on what we did here, let us know. Otherwise, let's keep going.